this. Come. No, I'm, I'm calling for this bigger bird. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Muito boa tarde. Queria dar mais uma vez as boas-vindas ao secretário-geral da NATO, Jan Stoltenberg. E, ao longo destes anos temos tido a possibilidade de ter um relacionamento muito próximo e muito efetivo, trabalhando para o fortalecimento da NATO como uma aliança defensiva e numa visão de 360 graus para as, diferenças, as diferentes ameaças que se colocam à nossa segurança. Seguramente em 2015, quando começámos a trabalhar juntos, não imaginávamos que estaríamos hoje com uma guerra no, nas fronteiras da NATO, em que se verificou uma mudança radical do ponto de vista geopolítico. Ainda há pouco tempo, alguns chefes de Estado julgavam que a NATO podia vir a enfraquecer, alguns diagnosticaram mesmo precocemente a sua morte cerebral, mas a verdade é que a primeira grande derrota do presidente Putin foi mesmo a revitalização da NATO, o reforço da Aliança Transatlântica entre os países europeus, o Reino Unido e os Estados Unidos da América, o fortalecimento da NATO, o pedido da adesão de dois países tradicionalmente neutrais, como a Suécia e a Finlândia, e, portanto, um claro reforço daquilo que é esta grande aliança defensiva, construída em torno dos valores da democracia, da liberdade, que nós continuaremos a trabalhar para reforçar. Portugal é um país fundador da NATO e mantém-se fiel aos compromissos que assumiu e é nesse sentido que agradecemos esta visita na preparação da próxima Semana de Vilnius, onde seguramente iremos poder reforçar aquilo que é a unidade da nossa aliança transatlântica, da defesa dos valores da paz, da liberdade, da democracia e num contexto onde, obviamente, é prioridade apoiar a Ucrânia para que a Rússia não ganhe esta guerra e se abra caminho para uma paz justa e duradoura que respeito o direito internacional, o direito à integridade territorial e o direito à integridade Prime Minister Kostal, Dear Antonio, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for the warm words. It's always a great uh, pleasure to be uh, in Lisbon and to meet uh, with you. And as you said, uh, Portugal is a founding member of this uh, alliance, and uh, I appreciate your uh, strong uh, leadership, your strong personal commitment to the bond between uh, North America and uh, Europe. Uh, uh, in uh, NATO. Uh, Portugal is a steadfast ally at the heart of uh, NATO. You make significant contributions to our air policing in the east of the alliance and to the NATO multinational uh, battle group in Romania. Portugal hosts the NATO Cyber Academy. Actually, we were there together and opened it uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, the Joint Analysis and Lessons Learned Center and Strike for uh, NATO. Today, our security environment is more dangerous than it has been since the Cold War. We just discussed, as you said, um, Russia's brutal war of aggression against uh, Ukraine. NATO will stand with Ukraine for as long as it takes. And I therefore thank Portugal for your support including the delivery of Leopard 2 tanks from Portugal to Ukraine and uh, your uh, contribution to NATO's comprehensive assistance package. Since the start of Russia's illegal war against Ukraine, NATO allies have provided unprecedented level of support. 
and I'm confident that the Ukrainian forces have the capabilities they need to retake occupied land. Our support has evolved through the different phases of the conflict, from light anti-tank weapons to advanced air defense systems, armored vehicles and heavy battle tanks. And I welcome the recent announcements by allies on providing cruise missiles and training Ukrainian pilots to use Western fighter jets. We must maintain our support, but now, uh, both now and for the longer term, so that Ukraine prevails as a sovereign independent state in Europe. In Vilnius in July, our summit will send a strong signal of support. I expect allies will agree a strategic multi-year assistance program to enable Ukraine to transition from Soviet era to NATO doctrines, equipment and training, and to achieve interoperability with NATO allies. We will respond to Russia's aggression in Ukraine. We must also, uh, while we respond to Russia's aggression in Ukraine, we must also tackle the continued threat of terrorism and instability in the South. We see Russia's destabilizing actions in Africa and how Russia and China are making inroads in the region. The summit will be an opportunity for allies to address these issues. And we must do more to build defense capacity with key partners in the South, such as Tunisia, Mauritania and Jordan. We also discussed uh, the need uh, to further enhance resilience of our critical undersea infrastructure. NATO has recently created an undersea infrastructure cell to coordinate efforts between NATO allies, partners and the private sector. We are also working uh, more closely with the European Union through the NATO-EU Task Force on Resilience and Critical Infrastructure. And I expect further announcements at the Vilnius Summit. Ensuring our security in a dangerous world means we need to invest even more in our defence and our deterrence. At Vilnius, I expect allies will agree a new defence investment pledge to spend at least 2% of GDP on defence. I welcome the recent increases in Portugal's defence spending, but all allies need to do more. We face many challenges which no country can, con or continent can tackle alone. So we must take bold decisions and demonstrate our commitment to the transatlantic bond. So, Prime Minister Costa, thank you again for your leadership, your strong personal uh, commitment, and I look forward to welcoming you to the NATO summit in Vilnius in July. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jens. Thank you.